Hello, it's good to be with you on this Wednesday, June 21st. I must tell you, I've uh, just passed uh, through a, a threshold, an area of life that I kind of enjoyed. It was a time that in my retirement, I took an oil painting class. And we just had our last class this last Friday. And I'm, I'm happy that it's done. I, I enjoyed what I accomplished and what I learned. But I'm a little sad that I won't be able to be there anymore. But there's always a threshold. There's always a time in our lives when we move from one thing, one stage, one, one place into another. And so God is always there with us. That's what I've understood. And today I know that there's a transition or a threshold you'll be approaching here soon. And, and I pray you understand God's working in your life. Now I want to give a little review of where we have been. Uh, just uh, the last few days, we have seen uh, God deal with those who maybe thought they should be the leader rather than God's chosen person. And God was very evident to them that, no, Moses is my chosen leader. In these things, we want to recognize who is it that is going to guide us? How does God select his leaders? Here in this portion, we're going to see a, a wonderful illustration of things that we need to understand and look forward to in, in those leaders that we're able to follow. This is during those 40 years of the children wandering in the wilderness. So there's great lessons to be learned here. Look forward to seeing what God's going to teach us in this passage today. Numbers chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and get twelve staffs from them, one from the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. Write the name of each man on his staff. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name, for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. Place them in the tent of meeting, in front of the testimony where I meet with you. The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. So Moses spoke to the Israelites, and their leaders gave him twelve staffs, one for the leader of each of their ancestral tribes, and Aaron's staff was among them. Moses placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. The next day Moses entered the tent of the testimony and saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the house of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. Then Moses brought out all the staffs from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each man took his own staff. The Lord said to Moses, Put back Aaron's staff in front of the testimony, to be kept as a sign to the rebellious. This will put an end to their grumbling against me, so that they will not die. Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. The Israelites said to Moses, We will die. We are lost. We are all lost. Anyone who even comes near the tabernacle of the Lord will die. Are we all going to die? On this June 21st, uh, Wednesday, we're looking at Numbers chapter 17. Now, this is in the middle of a book that speaks of all of the events of the children of Israel as they were wandering in the wilderness after they had originally declined uh, going into the promised land. God had said that he would be with them, but they were afraid and they were unable to do it. And so he said they would wander in the wilderness and it was during this period of time that uh, some people began to grumble. And I don't know, do people grumble in God's gathering in the house of God? Do people sometimes question the leadership? Well, that's what happened here. The verses prior to this chapter had to do with the rebellion of Korah when they challenged Moses' leadership. Now we're involved in a question regarding the uh, leadership of the priest, the one that will deal with the temple, the incense, the sacrifices, the 
Ark of the Covenant. Who, who will really handle those things? Well, well, God had appointed Aaron to do those things. And there was real question from the children of Israel, though, is he really, is he really God's choice? Or is that just Moses determining that, saying that it's, it's his brother Aaron here that's going to do it? Well, God, God told Moses, and let's look at it here in verse 1. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and get twelve staffs from them, one from the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. Now those ancestral tribes, you remember, was, well, Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob and Esau, and Jacob was the one that received the birthright, and that it was he who had the challenge with the angel, whose name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons, and those 12 sons became the heads of the household, or of the tribes of Israel. And it was those 12 tribes that we have here that God told Moses, collect the staff, the leadership. Who is, who is in charge of those families? Collect those things, write their names on it. And God says, place it before the Ark of the Covenant, and let's see what happens there. And now in verse 8, we see the result. The next day Moses entered the tent and saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the tribe of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. Now remember, this was just some stick that he picked up along the way, and he would use it to walk along to kind of balance himself or make sure the, the trail, if it's rough, that he's, he's stable on that. But here it is that God made this staff, Aaron's staff, to be one that would bloom and produce fruitfulness. Now, he goes on, Then Moses brought out all of the staffs from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each of the leaders took his own. The Lord said to Moses, Put back Aaron's staff in front of the Ark of the Covenant, law, the law, to be kept as a sign of to the rebellious this will be put this will put an end to their grumbling against me so that they will not die now at this point the idea was god out of all the 12 he chose particularly aaron's staff that he would be the leader that would represent the people before god that he they would bring the concerns before God, but also they would speak for God to the people and address it. Now, he being a leader, it doesn't mean that he's now the chief boss. It's not the one that he gets to lord it over and, and tell everybody, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. In fact, it reminds me of the leadership that Jesus gave to the disciples. You'll remember in the upper room when he washed their feet. He was a servant to them. In, in, in those ways, he demonstrated what the disciples needed to do, but it also has to do with God's attitude about what leadership is about. It's not about me, the leader. No, it's about me being the leader who is the servant of the people. The leader is to also be seen and work in a wonderful way that it's a fruitfulness that takes place. There is something that grows out of that relationship of the leader to the people. So as many of you are leaders in your home, your leaders may be in your job somewhere, or in some other capacity within the church of God, you may be a leader. Don't consider it a prideful thing to be puffed up about. No, consider it to be a servant. Consider that, is there fruitfulness coming out of your ministry that the lives of people are being affected and touched in a strong, powerful way? See, in this setting, God demonstrated what he saw in a leader was fruitfulness, that there's growth there. I'm kind of an old leader, but I'm still growing in my uh, 
life with the Lord. And I still desire to give fruitfulness to those that I lead in Bible studies or other ways. So never forget that a leader is one who brings fruitfulness to those that he leads. Living life. There's the area where we need to look at our leaders. We need to be willing and able to follow them as God is working through them. There's a challenge that as we as leaders need to recognize God is going to work through our lives also. So this little portion in the book of Numbers, everybody kind of knows where it's at or they hear about it and the idea of it, but it's such a wonderful demonstration, a, a practical demonstration of the fruitfulness that is God's hand upon Aaron, his hand to say, yes, this man, this one will give leadership in the temple, in the tabernacle to be the one who provides the gifts. Where do you give leadership? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today I just ask your hand to be upon each person as we hear these words from the book of Numbers. And we know your Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts and lives to transform us, to, to allow us to learn a lesson here from this passage. That as we are underneath leaders, let us not be too quick to grumble or to bicker or try to take on role or a responsibility that's not our own, Lord. May we be respectful. May we wait upon your hand, Lord, to move in the leader's life. And as leaders, may we be uh, willing, as one gentleman spoke to me earlier, to be li able to listen, to listen to the people we're with. Father, I pray you would guide us this day, and we thank you so much for your word. In your precious name, amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.